What is up you guys and of course always welcome back to another episode of Who Was Really Better. This week we're covering Aurora's vs Obama Snow and joining me today are MV which is gonna help me with the end result and which Pokemon we think is the better between these two. Now both Obama Snow and Aurora's is kind of filling the same initiative as Generation 6 which is hail setting and really disrupt team and heavily break teams apart. And we're really on par with one another. Both clearly were slower and had, in theory, some bulk to really match that up. I think, unfortunately, both Alola Ninetales and Vanillix replaced their niche as a defined abuser of Hail, but as a, their own right, they're definitely good teammates and have supported move pools to kind of contrast to that. But that said, I have a personal history with Obama Snow as it's a Pokemon I use heavily in Generation 5 in VGC as due to the better Wither Wars, um, clearly, uh, they were always permanent Brain, Sun and Hail and Obama Snow represented, of course, the centerfolds of something that could disrupt both Sun and, well, any weather really. Obama Snow filled that niche really nicely, disrupted Tyranitar for really abusing and getting a special defense boost while both Groudon and Kyogre fed whatever a bounce I could do to them. And also in dedicated trick room team, it works very well. And um, yeah, Generation 5 was super kind to it, so it's kind of hard to see how it faltered Generation 6. And now, basically, we are in duels of really what a Pokemon of this caliber really can do. So, with that said, let's cover the Pokemon, of course, in the first, first, which being a bounce stop, go know its stats, move pull, and overarch theme to find out which one of these two that really are better. So with that said, let's hit it off. So, Grass and Ice is one hell of a combination and something yet to be replicated. And, well, it is a really good defensive typing to an extent, versus electric grass, ground and water. There are so many things that really ruins the Bomb of Snow, which makes it tough for it, because bug fighting, flying, poison, rock, steel, and of course, quad weak to fire is commonplace in many ways and definitely are at least one of these times are easily fit on a team and you can only consider most of them being that and it doesn't necessarily have all the bulk to pull that off and the speed doesn't always hit first in that kind of essence we have a 90 base hp 92 in attack 75 and 85 in his representative defenses 92 in special attack which yeah same attack as special attack and speed yeah 60 while it does kind of allow it to work in the Trick Room team to an extent, it is something that's pushing it back somewhat, because the offensive stats aren't necessarily that intimidating, but the defensive kind of synergies together with something like high base HP really does help it to become somewhat bulky, so it's tough to take super effective hits from time off. Since it is so slow, it's going definitely before we've taken a few of these. It also has Snow Warning, which is its bread and butter, but it also carries something like Soundproof to be able to make sure the X-Plus Boom Burst doesn't ruin it. But, yeah, that's about it, really. Snow Warning is your bread and butter, and quite frankly, it's a phenomenal tool for a bomber snow. Moople wise well, let's just say it as it is. It has Blizzard, and it uses Blizzard with ease. It also, in Generation 7, got Aurora Veil, which makes it, if you want to go for it, a high-maintenance Aurora Veiler to carry, of course, the other team to become a lot better. The dual screen is quite nice. The other thing got this generation, which is really good, is her power basically solidifying to have the perfect combination of an ice and ground which something it does already carry with both Woodhammer and Earthquake but now you can capitalize on fully special and of course spam the bliss that it was made to go for as it does kind of carry this Pokemon forward um, that said though its physical Mokul is quite nasty and I really appreciate it as a whole as quite frankly it gets something like Rock Slide which is definitely so rare and we have Stomping Tantrum also to capitalize on something like that. And um, what do you know? Ice Punch. Yeah, <laughs> I guess that works. No, quite frankly, its physical move pool is good, but it's definitely not better than its special move pool. And it only kind of enforced that further as previously it used something like Focus Blast, but now due to her power, it can actually pretty much give up that move pool completely. However, its physical move pool have two good traits, which definitely needs to, well, keep in mind. It gets Soul Stance, which means that something like Ice Shard and Grassy Glide, two really strong priority moves, is something it can do and work out well with. It's just a damn shame that his Ice Stab really isn't necessarily stronger, as Ice Punch is, like I said, one of those moves they could use and also get with Icicle Spare, but we don't have an Icicle Crash or anything like that, which does, well, 
make it rather easy to just lean to that special set. It doesn't have a broad move pool that is supportive, unfortunately. It has light screen for all the matters, but overall, its supportive move pool is quite weak, only having something like Block to be able to kind of lure in opposing Pokemon. And when it comes to setup, like I said, the Soul Sense is one way, and Growth is the other. It has Weather Ball, so you can go for a very, very niche Sun Team team with Obama Snow, but yeah. Basically, Grove is kind of neutered the same second you switch in and set your hail, so Grove is tough. But overall, I definitely fear any well-played Obama Snow, and I really wouldn't want it any other way, as it is a phenomenal Pokemon with a really, really niche trait. So, it is off. Whether Auroras can keep on this. So, let's go over its stats and move pool. Now, Auroras has the same type of issues that Obama Snow has, which is just carrying an ice type in general. Uh, <laughs> It is something that, I mean, the typing is horrendously awful. While Rock and Ice is a good, unique typing, much like Ice and Grass, the resistances aren't necessarily that scary. You resist Flying, Ice, Normal, and Poison, you know, basically Rock plus Ice. But your weaknesses are Grass, Ground, Rock, and Water, and you have a quad weakness to both Finding and Steel. The only benefit that I see with this combination is that we have a Fire, or not weakness to Fire as an Ice type, but that's about it. There's a lot of maintenance weaknesses to keep up of, and its stats distribution isn't really that different from Obama Snow either, as well as a higher HP set of 1 and 23, like that's a lot more. Um, it has similar defensive distribute, 72 in its defense, 192, so the same as special defense as Obama Snow, but due to the higher HP stat, it is definitely bulkier. That said, it's not necessarily stronger. 77 in its attack, yeah, it's weaker on the physical side. The special attack, 90T, 99, 90T, 99 <laughs> over 92. So it's slightly stronger, but definitely not by a lot. And of course, 58 in its speed, so it's definitely slower than Obama Snow. So in a fist fight, yeah, Obama Snow has the edge. So if, if we're looking at it just straight on as it is, they have some re resemblance, but at the same time, Obama Snow has this time of edge here. So is the move pull something to kind of write home Aurora's about? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Because Aurora's move pool is, well, in contrast to Obama Snow, pretty much the same, but with small niches and kind of boosted and filters in there and whatnot. For example, both clearly get blistered and up power, so filled that already, they have the ice ground combination, which is phenomenal. And while, of course, Aurora's can't capitalize on a physical one of that, Aurora's <laughs> can capitalize on its special pool, and it has two ways of boosting that. It has both Call Mind, which for all intents and purposes are phenomenal, but you much likely would be carry a Meter Beam, which is a new move, which basically is a 120 powered rock special move, which boosts your special attack before it hits. Yeah, yeah, it's a great move. I love it. And it does kind of push the edge a little bit because it basically become that either you can use Aurora's to some type of a defensive or capitalizing on Pokemon with a supportive set because it gets Stealth Rock 2, which is phenomenal to get with Freeze Ride, or you could use it as a potential setup sweeper with Rock Polish. So yeah, it gets multiple ways of actually setting up. And <clears throat> the reason that is so big is because all of a sudden, we kind of broaden what this Blue Pool can do or, and this Pokemon can capitalize on. It definitely is, like I said, weaker stat distribution wise, but you can't patch them, unlike a Bomber Snow. And when it comes to filler moves, like I said, Freeze Ray, phenomenal option. It basically negate any type of water type that would wall this set to an extent. And also get Discharge with Thunderbolt, Charge Beam, when you want to go for an Assault Fest and kind of just boost yourself through there. And it also has Dark Pulse, Psychic, Flash Cannon. There's a lot of tools to do something more. It even can capitalize on using actually nature power. I've seen people use nature power with this Pokemon and actually use refrigerate over its um, synergy move um, ability in hail because you can capitalize on actually going for a very, very strong hyper voice and can use fire moves. A very nasty combination and probably one kind of seals it is also that this support so you can use Thunder Wave and Magic Rise. Basically, Aurora's has the tools to do a lot, a lot of things, a lot of things that any Rock or Ice type would dream of, and while it's theoretically worse off both defensively and with the typing combination and stat revision being a lot lower, it has the tools to become a lot more. So with that said, I'm gonna leave it to MV of which one he thinks is better. What's poppin' everyone? Now you might recognize my voice as the Lord Envy himself, and I'm here today with a guest narration to spread some knowledge on Aurora's vs. Obama Snow, and what I feel is the stronger option to use in the current metagame. 
Both of these Pokemon have a few things in common. Firstly, they are premier weather candidates to support hail teams with their snowboarding abilities, and they also carry Aurora Veil, which can temporarily reduce the damage your team takes overall. Let's talk about their stats typing and their move pools. Aurorus is without a doubt a bulkier Pokemon than Abomasnow. Abomasnow only has a base 90 HP stat, while Aurorus rocks a base 123. Pun intended of course with the rocks, because it is part rock type. Not to mention, Aurorus also has a higher special defense stat. You're able to tank more hits on the special side, which is nice especially when you're trying to check something like Choice Specs Dragapult for example. While Abomasnow has a marginally higher base defense, Aurorus is still a bulkier Pokemon on the physical defense side because it's carried by its base HP. In terms of bulk, Aurorus takes the cake, and of course Abomasnow being ice and grass type, it has 7 weaknesses while Aurorus being ice and rock has 6 type weaknesses. Type wise, Aurorus is better. It's an ice type that's not even weak to fire, making it a solid check to common Pokemon like bulky Heatran since they don't typically run flash cannon, and Aurorus does have access to earth power. Let's get on the topic of offenses now. At a first glance, Abomasnow is a better mixed attacker than Aurorus, having base, 92 attack, and 92 special attack. It has a wide variety of coverage moves on both the physical and special side. It can really just hit any side of the opposing Pokemon's defense. But on the other hand, Aurorus is more of a dedicated special attacker with a base 99 special attack, higher than Abomas knows. Its physical attack, which is base 77, while not entirely unusable, is really not the most optimal option on this kind of Pokemon, so stay away from that. Unless, of course, it's more a utility physical attack like Dragon Tail or Rock Tome, for example. Both move pools are really interesting, though. These Pokemon have amazing coverage for their respective stats they choose to attack in, but Aurorus has access to one of the best ice type moves in the game. Freeze Dry, which unfortunately Abomasnow cannot learn. This move allows you to hit water type super effectively, which is extremely useful in so many matchups. Aurorus also has access to Stealth Rocks, which Abomasnow doesn't have, so there's even more added value in the utility of this Pokemon. In terms of setup, Abomasnow's go-to is Swords Dance, and it does also have priority Ice Shard, which is quite useful, since Abomasnow isn't really the fastest Pokemon, and there's no other way to boost its speed with the click of a move. While Aurorus is also not the fastest Pokemon at face value, it does get access to Rock Polish, allowing it to outrun most of the metagame after one use. It also learns Calm Mind, which is an interesting way to boost its special offense and make it much bulkier on the special side. It can even run Meteor Beam with Power Herb as a way to sweep teams, and a more useful alternative ability in Refrigerate as opposed to Abomasnow Soundproof, which I haven't seen come into play much on Abomasnow in the current generation. So to summarize everything I've said, Aurorus has fewer weaknesses than Abomasnow in terms of typing, better bulk, a more useful offensive move pool, better utility moves, stronger setup options, and personally having used both of them extensively in my time, I think Aurorus is just a cooler Pokemon in my opinion, another pun intended of course. My rules are as follows. If you want to use a Pokemon specifically to set up Hail, Aurorus is the way to go. And if you want a Pokemon specifically to set up Aurora Veil, just use a little Nine Tails. Myself really agree on this. Envy, I want to thank you for taking your time. Um, for me, the reason Aurora's wins is because of the flexibility of doing a lot more. In a league environment, I think that's much higher appreciated. But just Aurora's has a defiantness and a suicide lead supported Pokemon, while Obama Snow kinda it fits on a team because you wanna be kinda fun. And and that's not a good trait, and it's a very, very poor one at that. I really miss the old Obama Snow from Generation 4 and 5 because it was such a significant mom, but I realized it was that because there was no competition to what it was doing and what it does. While while it was good, others have perfected it now. And Obama Snow, unfortunately, is not a forgettable mom, but it's definitely a Pokemon that aren't as good as it was before. So that's it, guys. As always, I want to thank you for watching. I want to thank Envy for taking his time of his day to help me out with this video. And with that said, have a great day, everyone. All right, bye.